morning, everybody. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Welcome to the SDG Media Zone here at the United Nations uh, on the plaza, the Visitors Plaza outside the General Assembly Hall. Uh, this is a historic day uh, which we're here to talk about. Uh, in this room uh, and live on UN uh, uh, webcast, uh, uh, webtv.un.org, uh, we are going to be broadcasting a full program, starting off with the subject of climate change. We've just seen uh, inside the General Assembly Hall the Secretary General receiving instruments of ratification for the Paris Climate Agreement. And then later in the day, we're going to be moving to the subject of global health, and antimicrobial resistance, where the President of the General Assembly is, uh, uh, my boss, uh, is hosting a meeting, a high-level meeting to address antimicrobial resistance. Uh, this is a program being put together uh, uh, here in this tent with support from, from the UN Foundation. We're extremely grateful to that. And so without further ado, let's kick off. I'm Dan Thomas. I'm the spokesperson, the communications director for the President of the, the United Nations General Assembly. And we're absolutely honored to have with us today a very distinguished uh, a panel of, of climate change uh, champions and advocates and experts uh, from around the world. Uh, on, 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 the far, on the far right, uh, Hakima al uh the Minister of Environment from uh, Morocco, the Special Envoy for COP22, and also a high-level climate champion. So thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, uh, on, on the right as well, uh, Madame Ségolène Royal, the uh, French Minister uh, of Environment and the President of COP21. Thank you for joining us. Uh, ne next to her, we have John Room, uh, World Bank's uh, Climate uh, Senior Director. Thank you. And uh, here to my right, uh, I'm pleased to announce the new Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, uh, Patricia Espinoza. So thank you very much. A warm round of applause for our, our guests. And we don't have a lot of time. We've just got about 20 or 25 minutes. It would be nice to get some questions uh, going from the audience. So I'm going to start off um, by asking uh, Madame Royale, if, if I may, to, to kick us off. And uh, you, were, you were instrumental in getting world leaders to come to Paris and make an agreement on climate change. Where do we go from Paris? What needs to happen next? And what is so significant about today? Today, uh, as you said, it, it, it is an historical day because we have now 61 uh, parties, 61 countries, and uh, 47 emissions. So we are very near of, uh, yeah. of uh, the, uh, the goal, to the goal. And uh, when I arrived at the head of COP21, I said publicly uh, our goal is to uh, have the Paris Agreement in action before Marrakesh. Uh, and uh, I think we'll do. We'll do it. And this is uh, fantastic because uh, it's the first time in the history of the agreement, of the international agreement, that something like this is going so quickly. And I think that uh, everybody has understood that uh, there is an urgency, urgency for climate, so urgency in the ratifications, urgency for actions, because a lot of people all around the world are, are waiting uh, concrete actions. And this is a very, very good news. Thank you very much. Now, if I can turn to you, uh, 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 Minister Hakima, uh, the ball passes from you from Paris to Marrakesh next. How are you in Marrakesh at COP22 going to take, uh, take the ball and, and, and move it down the playing field? Thank you. COP22 uh, is a COP which is under the banner of action. And uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Minister said, COP22, we should uh, show to the world that the trust we have built in Paris is sustained, and the solidarity we have cultivated in Paris is sustained in COP22. And the only way to show that is that uh, we go and we come to COP22 with the entry into force of the agreement, a strong 
commitment. This is a huge sig political signal which will be given around the world and especially to the most vulnerable countries. To come to Marrakesh with answers to people who are already suffering from um, tackling climate change. And the answers are not any more speeches, but concrete allocation of money, concrete allocation for project, and concrete answers to hunger, to energy, to access to water, to access to food and uh, food security, for st to stabilize all the migrants who are now migrating around the world. This is what we are waiting in COP22. Terrific. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, Ms. Espinosa, may maybe you can... Um Maybe you can talk about today's ceremony. I mean, this was a historic moment for the United Nations, for the Secretary General, the, the, uh, the Secretary of State for the United States praised the United Nations and the Secretary General and uh, the system as a whole for the leadership on this. Uh, what, what does today mean to you? Well, um, I have been um, in multilateral affairs a long, long time. Actually, I'm a career diplomat. I have 35 years of uh, career, much of it in the multilateral area. And I can really attest to the fact that uh, this kind of uh, development, this change in the um, uh, awareness and the political will uh, at the highest level in order to commit to an agenda that is really global uh, happens for the first time. It's uh, an agenda, when we speak about climate change, we are speaking about well-being of people. We're speaking about the lives of people, livelihoods. We're speaking about infrastructure, processes that are going on for many, many years with climate-related uh, phenomena can be destroyed in just one night. So this is um, the first time that I, I can see and we all can see that there is such a collective response by the international community and that uh, actually we face the challenge that uh, the agreement will be entering into force much uh, before it was even imagined at the conference in Paris. So that will put some challenges to us in terms of how we will do the proceedings that are foreseen uh, in the Paris Agreement. But as I say to my uh, colleagues in the Secretariat, i rather have this challenge than the challenge of not knowing when the agreement <laughs> is going to enter into force. So I think this is uh, an enormous legacy that the Secretary General is going to leave behind when he finishes his term. And uh, I do think that this also shows how much his personal leadership has uh, meant for this process. Thank you very much. And if I may turn to you, John Room, the World Bank's Senior Director on Climate Change. The world's economy's got to change now, hasn't it? How is the World Bank supporting this process? What needs to happen in the real world uh, to lead this sort of extraordinary change that, that we need to see? So. Paris was a great celebration because of the agreement. Now we're going to get the, uh, the agreement to enter into force. That's excellent. Now it's about implementation. If you think about the amount of investment that's going to take place in the world in the next 15 years, it's more than the total amount of investment that's taken place in all of history. And so the challenge is how do you shape those investments so they're low carbon and resilient to climate change? And that's what we from the World Bank are focusing very much on. So a few areas that we're focusing on. One. How do we support countries to implement their NDCs? Take the NDCs, turn them into concrete policies, turn them into concrete investments, and embed them in the budget process. Secondly, finance. How do we help countries in their budget process to allocate domestic resources? But more than that, how do we crowd in the trillions of dollars of private sector financing to try and mobilize this money to get action at scale on the ground? That means reforming the financial sector. The G20 is making progress on this. It means putting in place policies at the sector level. It means eliminating uh, fossil fuel subsidies and moving on mm. a carbon price. A bunch of things to mobilize private finance. Then the energy transition. Key that we make this happen. Lots of good things happening. We're seeing the price of renewables fall, but it's not happening fast enough. Sigalin Royale had a very good meeting yesterday on the Africa Renewable Energy Initiative. 
excellent, it's moving, African nations are behind it, not because they're high emitters, but because they see the future that this has for them. We have to accelerate this transition in Asia as well. There's still a lot of coal-fired power plants on the books. We need to accelerate renewable energy, accelerate energy efficiency. And finally, we've got to build resilience. Our analysis shows that if we don't take action now, by 2030, we'll have more than 100 million more people living in poverty, a lot of these in Africa. So building in resilience in the agriculture sector, in water, in transport, is absolutely critical going on. And then in the short term, this focus on Africa for the COP is really going to be important to show what does this agreement mean for Africa, and in particular for poor people in Africa. Thank you, thank you. Now before we uh, open it up to questions, I'd like to just do one quick round, uh, uh, one more round, and then we'll, we'll open it up to questions from, the, uh, from our audience of invited uh, uh, social media specialists, digital media journalists. We have CCTV here from China as well. Um, this is related to the Sustainable Development Goals, which is what this media zone is really all about, is getting a conversation going about Agenda 2030, how we achieve these goals, and of course how climate action fits into that agenda. So, Madame Royale, could you tell us how, how do you see climate action fitting into this broad agenda of sustainable development, Agenda 2030? Yes, thank you. There is um, a coordination between uh, the Action Week, the Action Day from the COP21, from the COP22, and all this action of sustainable development. Because sustainable development is in the heart of how we can build a new economy without uh, pollution, without uh, over-exploitation, and without rewarming. These are the, the three problems for the planet and for the relation between human and planet. And so when you take each of these uh, purposes, of, of these goals, you have the same action in the climate, act, in the climate action, in the, in the uh, action agenda. For example, water, forest, agriculture, education, uh, renewable energy, health, uh, urgency, uh, warning, um, ocean, uh, and so on. Each of these points, each of these issues uh, uh, have to be followed and to receive concrete action and concrete finan finance. And to accompany those uh, goals, we must uh, have uh, green finance right. and uh, the, the pillar, the other pillar of the Paris Agreement is green finance. And what is green finance is um, a price for carbon and there is a coalition of carbon price led by the World Bank and by France. Uh, you have uh, green reporting and now the big companies are obliged to have green reporting and uh, there is a bill in France to oblige big companies to have uh, green reporting and invest in the green growth uh, to impulse this, uh, this uh, green uh, finance is very, very important. And this is a new point uh, of uh, uh, COP21 because before the COP, before you didn't have, you didn't have uh, finance, uh, finance uh, power and and uh, companies power. Right. And this is the first time where finance <laughs> investment are here, and they understand and they understood it. It is um, more expensive to do nothing than to do. Right. That's a key point, isn't it? Minister Hakima, how do you see this, uh, what you're doing in Marrakesh at COP22 relating let to me, this agenda? Let me tell you what I believe. I believe that if we are not able to implement the Paris Agreement, we will never reach the 17 goals of the SDGs. Because right. we are, where we are speaking, climate change, we are speaking about a human issue. We are speaking about a development issue. We are speaking about a human rights issue. When you are speaking about refugees and uh, migrants, 
when you are speaking about health, the impact of climate change on health, it's uh, more than 7 million who are killed each year because of the pollution. So where, when we are speaking climate change, in fact, as Ségolène says, we are speaking SDGs. And now what we are trying to do with the, the French presidency and the champions are working to build bridges between the climate negotiation and the action agenda. The, those bridges, we are asking all the coalition not only to give us their reporting concerning the CO2 emission, but also concerning the SDGs. We want to build those bridges. We have built walls for many years. Now it's time to know if any action we are undertaking on the ground is helping humanity. This is what it's about. It's about human, and this is what we are working on. So with the UNFCCC and the French champion, we are creating a framework, and we will launch in Marrakesh the Champion Climate Agenda Partnership, which will allow to build the bridge between the SDGs and the climate, cha the climate change uh, uh, convention. Voila, that's a great comment. Um, two more goes, and then we'll have some questions from the audience. Uh, Ms. Espinosa, maybe you can uh, refer to that idea, the Agenda 2030, how it relates to climate change and climate action. Well, I really believe in the end it's really only one agenda, and it's one development agenda. There is not an agenda and there is not a policy on climate change that has no meaning for development. The fact uh, that within the development SDGs there is a, a, a goal 13 yeah. on climate change makes it very evident, but uh, at the same time, if we look at the different uh, SDGs, number one until 17, uh, actually action on climate change has to happen in each of, for each of those goals. So, um, in my opinion, what we need to do is to help countries uh, putting together institutional legal frameworks, policy frameworks that allow them to um, build development programs, development planning that take into account the SDGs and at the same time incorporate the NDCs, which are the goals from Paris Agreement. Terrific. John Room, your, your comment on the Agenda 2030 and climate action. So I think there's consensus on two points. These are not separate agendas. They're completely interrelated. And secondly, I agree with Hakima. We cannot meet the SDGs and we cannot meet our poverty alleviation goals unless we address climate change. Right. Think about it this way. The world is heading to a population of about 9 billion. We already have over a billion people that are malnourished. Unless we move towards climate smart agriculture, we're going to see agricultural production fall because of climate change. And so we've got to be able to take action on this in order to meet our nutrition goals. There's 1.1 billion people that don't have access to energy. This needs to be done in a way that is fast and is built around renewable energy. I could go on and on and list these areas. But to our point of view, these are completely interrelated, completely put together. From the World Bank's perspective, we're now mainstreaming through all of our activity a climate lens in order to move it forward and trying to work with countries to help do exactly what Patricia Espinosa said. How do we take these climate considerations in the NDCs and mainstream it into mainstream education policy, health policy, uh, agriculture policy? Terrific. Thank you so much. And I'm pleased to say we've, uh, we've, we've got a, uh, a question that I think has come in on, on Twitter. We've got people watching this live uh, on the webcast. Here's a question from Twitter um, from We Mean Business, uh, our friends at We Mean Business. How do we mobilize hashtag private sector financing towards low carbon investment? Um, uh, Minister Royale, maybe you can have a go at answering that question. Yes, thank you. The, p the first point is uh, to uh, increase uh, the carbon price coalition and everybody has to come in the carbon price coalition because if you have a carbon price, so the investment in the green growth are becoming uh, fruitful. 
Yes. So this is yeah. a first point, and yes. that's why uh, we throw an appeal to come in the carbon price coalition. It's very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. In France, for example, the carbon price, the price, the carbon price is of uh, about 35 uh, euro uh, per ton. Right. And uh, we propose, I proposed. Uh, today, uh, during the meeting of uh, World, uh, World Bank, uh, that there is a panel of Nobel Prize of Economy uh, which can uh, fix a carbon price for each group of countries. Because, of course, the carbon price can't right. be the same all around the world. Right. Because it, it must uh, be calculated countries by countries or group of countries by group of countries. This is the first point. The second point is to have, uh, to have a green reporting. Because everybody has to see how big companies and, uh, and financial groups uh, are investing in green growth. It is very important. And now what is new is that those companies understood that it's good for their, uh, for their image, for, for their reputation to go in green growth. And for example, to close uh, investment in coal, for example. Yeah. And this is very new, and we have to push this kind of good behavior. Thank you. Minister Hakima, your answer. What are you doing in, in Morocco to mobilize private sector money towards low carbon investment? Let me answer to the first question. Two words, coherency of policies. We can't ask the private sector to invest if we are still subsidizing fossil fuel right. and if we are still installing each day or each week in uh, some country a coal installation. So if we want to move, we should worldwide establish this coherency of the policies to make the private sector to trust us, to trust the policies and to invest. This is the first point. Second point, to invest on innovation. There are many innovation now. We know them, but they have no invest. We believe that innovation will switch, will, uh, will uh, allow us to change the paradigm. And we need to invest on innovation. And this is the issue. For me, in Marrakesh, we, we are preparing the low solution uh, uh, carbon conference, three days of innovation, and bringing together leaders, leaders of coalitions, leaders of parties to discuss the policies, and also to show and to show cases of innovation. And we are br bringing together the financial institution to help those inventors to have investment for their invention. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop you there. Now, both of you, you've said you've got other meetings to go to. Uh, and so you're going to have to leave in about, I reckon, three minutes uh, right now. Uh, so I'm going to thank uh, the panelists for, for being here. That's all we're going to have time for. Um, I'd like to thank Segalin Royal, COP21 president. Thank you. Uh, Hakima al Haiti, the, uh, the special envoy for COP22. Thank you for being here. John Room from the World Bank Group. And Patricia Espinoza, the Executive Secretary of UNF, Triple C. Thank you very much for a great session. Thank you. Thank you.